How's it going Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games and today we've got the uh, well, one of my games from my locals and I've decided to kind of update my kind of uh, content because I know people have, like someone uh, there's one person I know that keeps constantly suggesting it so I've decided to put him and I have my deck list that I played for in these game so here's a deck list you can see a more in-depth deck profile that i put out on monday detailing deck and like the card choices and stuff like that so if you want more in-depth look at this list and kind of understand it a bit more go check that out otherwise it's just a quick look at the list that i played for the event and i don't have the list for my opponent's list because i don't grab them i don't basically think to ask or forget and by the time it's over they've gone so i don't have to leave my opponent's list but here is my list i use for this game so enjoy <laughs> Right, so we've got the gameplay here for my round one of my welcome, well, in-person locals on Fridays. And for this one, like you saw with the deck profile, I decided to take Yellow Boba because it's one of the decks I'm considering for Manchester because I'm not going to Leicester. And um, I wanted to test out to see what decks kind of like suit me, what could have a good chance. And uh, I've been trying to test out different ones. I've tested out Kira last week, tested out Han not long before. And I will be testing the next one, I believe. Actually, I'm not sure what I'm going to test the next one. Maybe Tarkin. I want to try and test out all the different ones that kind of like, seem interesting and kind of appeal to me to try and see which one is uh, a better suit for me that I think has the best chance to win for Manchester. And Bobby Yellow is one of my favorite deck. It's probably my most favorite one from the deck, from the um, from the game. Outside the Chirrut, probably like sec a second only the Chirrut. And I thought I'd give it a try because it got some really nice things for the set one, and I kind of like put together my list and was happy for it. Now I do have to apologise for the glare. Unfortunately, I was on the downstairs table for this um, for this round, and the glare is quite bad because it's very light downstairs, and uh, a lot more is upstairs, and there's nothing I could do with it. There's nothing I can really put over it to kind of shield the cards from glare. But I have added the cards that do get played for um, each of the games. Like on each side, so you'll see what card my opponent plays, what card I play each time we play a card, or like, yeah, or action. Now, I'm playing Boba Fett for set one leader, so the yellow Boba one leader, and my base is Jabba's Palace, or yellow base. So, and my opponent is playing Sabine, and he has the, a green base, it's not ELC, but in the Jewish lab, it is um, Maz Kanada's Palace, I believe. So, um, I think, yeah, this is the one where I. I think I didn't win the, win the ship. I lost it because I think uh, Alan called. I think Alan, yeah, Alan called it and he got and he got it right. So he went. We just I normally go for it, like odds or evens, and he called it and got the initiative. But he didn't have a turn one place, so even though even after Mulligan and having all those turn one plays, didn't get anything. And I was able to. So I thought I'd start off with play out a cartel space so it gets like on the board. Again, even though I'm not making use of its effect, we get on the board. So straight after that, he passes, and. Yeah, well, he takes the initiative straight away, and then we pass the next turn. He plays out his Echo Base Defender, put like a nice little Sentinel on board, and I play out Bodhi Rook. And the reason I play Bodhi here is because I want to have a look and see what he's got in his hand, see if he's got a Dark Saber and rip it out of his hand. So when it comes to the next turn, he can't just deploy Sabine and then like slap it down on her and um, make it like very hard to deal with. And unfortunately, I didn't see it. I, he did at least have a card to take out, rip out of the hand, so I didn't whiff. I managed to at least rip a card out of his hand, being the um, Vambrace Flamethrower thing, that upgrade. So I was able to take that out of his hand, so I take something out of his hand, but there was no Darksaber. But unfortunately, for the next turn, he then drew into Darksaber. So this is where, like, potentially, there can be a Sabine being dropped with Darksaber. I do have four resources. I'm not, I can't remember exactly what I have in hand. But I do have a unit out, so potentially as soon as, um, unless he takes it out with my, with his uh, Echo Base Defender, then, um, yeah, like, well, he's got an Echo Base Defender to kind of hold it off, but if I could, I could potentially ambush that, and then potentially try and take out Sabine as soon as he deploys it, but if he deploys Sabine now, straight away, then I'm not going to be able to get through, it's going to be hard to deal with her. In this case, you can see he was about to play a Mars Canal. I put that on board so he could start playing things, making it stronger. But instead, just goes ahead and equips the Dark Saber onto his Echo Base Defender. Now, this is quite scary. Now, it's not the most like best use of it because it would bear use on Sabine because then Sabine's harder to remove. But this does make Echo Base Defender an 8 6 because the Dark Saber gives an extra 4 power and 3 health to a unit. So it makes him 
uh, basically doubles the stats on a base defender, and that's quite scary. So what I try to do is go with um, Cunning, rest it so that way I use Cunning to rest it so it can't attack straight away because that's a lot of damage on my base, I do not want that. And then give Bodhi enough power that he can take it out. So then he deploys Sabine after um, after I use Cunning and I'm like, I have, like well, I have to go for the Echo Base Defender so at least take that out and then that's one gone and then get swinging with, Echo, with the um, Space Unit, Cartel Spacer and then drop a Greedo on board. Because I have something to potentially take out Sabine with. So, not the greatest play with Darksaber, but still made it so I had to, for, uh, to use a Cunning so I could take it out, because that's a scary thing. 8 power on a, uh, on a Sentinel, that's keeping it there. And if he got an attack in after dropping Sabine, Sabine he could have made Sabine stronger, giving her an extra 1 1 thanks to Darksaber's effect. Actually, no, I can't remember if Darksaber needs a Mandalore. No, I think it's just when it attacks. I should have checked it when I saw it when, I, when it was up. I think it might have been able to give her an uh, uh, experience. But now for his first play, because he got the initiative, he drops a wing leader because now it makes Sabine a bit stronger. So Sabine is now a 4-7. Um, four so same stats as my leader, which I can deploy this turn. So that's a scary thing. And I want to do want to get a bit of chip damage on the front there. I want to get, uh, kind of try and take it out. So I decided to go with like uh, smuggling my hotshot blaster. And Ram Greedo into Yeah, Ram Greedo into Sabine to kind of do enough damage so I can potentially take it out. And unfortunately I do not hit the um do not hit an event after so I don't take it out just fall short by two power, which off oh, two damage, which is just a shame. If I hit that, um I thought it was a good risk because I do five damage, and if I hit the event from Greedo's effect, then I could have taken her out. But unfortunately it falls short, but I have um done a lot of damage to her, so now she's gonna swing for five to my base. And even though I was going to take her out and kind of trigger Boba, he still has a space unit I could take out. So here I take out the wing leader with Cartel Spacer, taking out, taking two damage, but then triggering Boba to get a resource back. And now I could deploy Boba and then get the benefit of uh, swinging in and attacking two resources. So here he makes use of his last two resources, dropping, um, what's it, House Cast Soldier. And I deploy Boba. Now I can either take, finish off Sabine or take out his House, uh, house Cast Soldier. But here I'm going to put the Boba's armor I have on in hand to it to attack it and take it out. Now here is where we kind of did misplay because usually Sabine is um, well not misplay but uh, didn't resolve something fully because with Sabine she is usually a two power and then Boba's armor makes it so you don't, you take two less damage when you take damage on Boba. But forgot that he boosted it up so there's two experience on it like experience of boba here should have taken two damage but in the end of it it didn't really make too much different like he wasn't off any damage or anything like that and taking things out but um yeah we just forgot the uh, missed that so unfortunately that's uh, my bad well both our bads really but um so like here you can see boba has no damage but he should have two damage on and then to make use of my other three resources i throw down a seven fleet defender put another unit on board and comes to shield so it's kind of protected to kind of have something that's safe to keep swinging because so far he's done eight damage to my base so i've done four damage to his and he's still got one unit on board being his house cast soldier so you've got something that i can attack into take no damage from really and then uh trigger boba to get some resources back so make use of it i also haven't resourced because uh, i have five resources i can play a majority of my stuff and i've only got three cards in hand so i don't i don't want to really resource i have like not many things to play so and uh, if I had a Fest Fire Spray in hand, I might have resourced up to a six so that I can um, essentially just go ahead and. What was it? So I can go ahead and like, play it out. But since I don't have one, I can just keep it five and keep fine with that. Just keep a number of options in hand. And then here he puts he brings, brings out the. Uh, what's it called? The Disable Flank Fire to take off my. Armor, and I think it's this point as well. I've resourced one because I think I had two at one point. So I resourced one and then had the second one. So now I'm just I have one more to draw into, but I've lost the uh, that amazing armor on Boba on my lead. And I go ahead and play Continue Bouncer so I can trigger Boba's effect this turn by bouncing his House Cast Soldier so he, because he hasn't attacked with it yet. And then he plays out a Battlefield Marine. Rather than just removing that Battlefield Marine, I decide to go because I remember I saw Wrecker in his hand early in the game after using a uh, Bodhi. So I don't really want to take too much damage on um, Boba <laughs> for I need to just Wrecker and take it out. So I decided to just swing for base for four, put more damage on base, and then he puts on his Heroic Resolve onto his Battlefield Marine, meaning that next turn, because he's taking the initiative as well, 
he could just go and take out my bow but now because he can just use the effect pay to uh, remove the heroic resolve and then swing his battle ring for seven into my bow but to take it out because he no longer had the armor so it's not going to take uh it's not really going to take anything but it would have taken two damage over because remember boba should have two damage and also i throw a surprise strike to kind of throw a bit more damage to kind of start ramping up the damage on his base with my um seven fleet defender now i could have swung the seventh fleet into his uh, disabling fang fire instead of cartel spacer because that would have kept me a unit on board because I would have kept the cartel spacer and done a little bit less damage. But I thought it'd be a lot more beneficial to have that shield on my. I don't know why, but I thought it'd be more beneficial to have the shield on the Seventh Fleet Defender to kind of keep something protected so it keeps on there so I can keep swinging that free damage every turn to kind of make sure I have got some, something that's constantly threatening, threatening him, pushing damage, and he can't really deal with it as a. Uh, effectively as he would want to, whereas if he didn't have the shield, they might be a bit more vulnerable. But I'm not sure what in Sabine could potentially take things out that easily. I don't think there's many or any space units that have ambush in Sabine, for especially for green uh red. So I could have essentially attacked the seventh fleet them in there and kept the cartel spacer to kind of have more present more units on board to keep going through. And now here he's gonna use the heroic resolve to just sacrifice his uh stuff his um battle for marine to give it 4 power and overwhelm and just take out my boba, so do 7 damage, take it out and yeah, boba should have had 2 damage, so it should have passed on because it has overwhelm, 2 damage next to my base but in the end it didn't make much difference, it's just something we both missed on so here I just go ahead and throw 3 more damage at, uh, with cartel, well no, Katina bouncer at his base so now boba fett is not um it's not level anymore, I'm not going to get any more resources, I've only got the 5 I've got and once again I didn't charge because I haven't had anything like pay for 6 resources and I'd rather keep some cards in hand now. Keep my options open because I'm only if I charge, I'm only getting one extra card, and my hand is not that great after kind of trying to control the board with what I had before. So that the like use it quite a bit to kind of deal with the Echo Base Defender with the um, Dark Saber. On. So I thought it'd be best to just keep cards and not have to resource. You don't really have to resource that much, and with Boba's effect to kind of give you back resources, you don't have to worry about too much. And here, um, as you can see, so Alan was about to play his um, red squadron, uh, yeah, green squadron anyway. But decided so instead just pass because he could, if he played it out, I would just swing into it, take it out with some of the defenders, keep that board to a minimum. So he decided to pass, wait for me to attack with him. So instead, I decided to go with cunning to kind of boost up one of my my uh, some of the defender and also rip a card from hand, and that kind of managed to hit his is his, his um, green squadron anyway, which is. Uh, a bit a bit of a feels bad for Alan because that was the only unit he had in his hand so he ended up by just taking initiative and I swung an extra seven damage to base so now he has he is six damage away from game and I've got his exit damage on board so enough to look at his hand he cannot do enough to kind of deal with that and that amount of uh, the units I have on board is enough to do go for game so that's a scoop up and now we're gonna head into game two so what we're going to quickly do is see what we've got for options to side in and see what I decided to side into. So check for that. So as we saw from my um well from my uh, deck deck list at the start, this is the side deck I have. So these these are the cards I have I can side in for game two. And also here is what it, I did side in for this game. So for against Sabine, I'm I'm fine like. Really, Bodhi isn't as great. Like, sure, I can drop it and potentially hit things like uh, the Dark Saber out, and also things like um, a Four Calls of Believing. But most of the time, it's not going to be a great because I can have mostly units. And same with Waylay, it's going to be bouncing back things back to hand, like record stuff, but they can still replay them. So it's not the best in terms of removal against things like this. So I decided to switch out my um. Well, Side out my free bodies to in place for a Toro because he could be a bit more aggressive. Deploying like when I play out Bounty Hunter, which also I can have um, ambush and stuff like that. I can restand him so I can basically be more aggressive with him, and he's a better play than Bodies. Also got better stats, and also switch out my two way lay for two Renner's Pursuit because it's a bit better removal. And also I do on Boba, I can protect it a little bit better because I can not only capture something that's five or less because Boba is five, like has a cost of five on the leader but also give a shield token to Boba to protect him a little bit better. And if I put down I on um put down a armor on him as well, he could be both like stronger with armor and also protected by a shield. And also it's a better way to remove things like K2SO and stuff like that by being able to just remove it. And we've even capture units in the space arena and put them under Boba. 
So that's why I signed in. So enjoy game two. So now that we've all sided up, uh, I think I can't remember if Alan sided, but I think I think he might have sided in some cards, and I've sided in mine, which we've all just gone through. And now we're going to see how effective we can go. So once again, Alan has the initiative for this game, and I'm just trying to see if I can get make sure I've got a turn one play. So currently one up, and it's not going too bad. Like it. It's quite fortunate it wasn't the best play to put the Dark Saber on the Echo Base Defender, but at least it forced me to have to deal with that because eight damage unit, that's six health and is a is a um, sentinel that then protecting Sabine from like being dealt with because it's protecting her from attacks and I have nothing really to deal with it. I could waylay, but I didn't have I don't think I had a waylay in hand. And um Yeah, making sure I have to deal with that there and then and there. So here we go, he starts off with that Battlefield Marine, so a bit better than the first game. Starts off with a uh, solid unit on board, and I think the only, yeah, the only what, the two cost unit I could play, or a turn one unit I could play, was Cartel Spaces. So I just thought I'd that down and get something that I can't really disrupt, and it's a unit in play, so it's not an attacking move. So he's making use of my first turn. So, he's got this unit, so he can start hitting pretty hard from the uh, already from the ground. So I need to kind of put something down as well to kind of deal with that. And I think in this match, as you've seen, I've swapped out the bodies because, once again, why it's good to take out those dark, um, those dark sabers. It's not the best because if he doesn't have dark saber, it doesn't like you can see from his hand now. He doesn't have any non-units in his hand. So if I were to play, if I kept him body and just had to play it, I would hit nothing hand and just basically play out free free. That doesn't no benefit. He's played a two cost free free. So he starts off with just swinging at base for the battle for marine, and I start to play out my toro. So I can go ahead and start being a bit more aggressive and just get a unit out because it's probably the best unit I had to play turn that turn because I haven't got many, too many things to play in the early game. Once it gets to the later game, that's when I've got more fun things to play. And here he throat, uses ever free resources to just put down Echo Base Defender, puts like on play that, um, yeah, on board that I have to go through before he enters his base. What's it been? So putting that protection out before. Really annoying Sentinels, but not too bad to deal with. So I just decided so rather than just pass and have the initiative, I'm just going to swing base for two because it doesn't matter because he can't take out my Toro with either of his units because he's got five health, whereas the maximum you've got is four damage on Echo Base Defender. And so I decided to just get that chip damage on all the, all the every little helps with um the damage really. So from now on, if I'm going up to four resources now. Anytime I play a Bounty Hunter, I can put a damage on that Bounty Hunter to restand Toro. Which is really nice, so I can kind of control the board a little bit better. Or even swing in base a lot. Or even take or even now take out Echo Base Defender with Toro. And then be able to restand him by playing the Bounty Hunter. And swing a bit more damage to his base. So at this point as well, he can also deploy Sabine. But he doesn't have a Dark Saber, so he's not in the like a I'm not in a terrible position. I don't have to worry too much about that, but I don't know that at the moment. But it's just a scary turn, so I have to weigh out my options. But he's got the initiative, so he's got the first play. He's just deciding what he wants to do first. And here he goes ahead and swings straight away with the Echo Defender. A very good play, because I'm going to have to take that out to get to any of his other units or to his base. So I'm going to have to attack that first. So I might as well get a swing with it, because it can easily die to Toro. So here I'm just going to like weigh out the options as well. And um, I'm thinking, do I attack with Cartel Spacer to just pass an action before doing anything? Or do I just... I keep the um, tour around and I decided to go ahead and drop a Cloud Rider to take out Echo Base Vendor because Cloud Rider is just there to ambush and take something out. It's strong enough to take out Echo Base Vendor and it means that Toro could now not take as much. Like taking four damage means it's easy to take out and he's like very close to death. And I think I misread it Toro thinking Toro had to have the damage to restand where I think that's, that is wrong. It's supposed to be on the, the bounty hunter you play. So here, after ambushing in, I untap with um, Boba as well, and he just goes ahead and swings at my base with um, his Battlefield Marine. And then, just to make an action once again, because I haven't attacked with the um, space unit, so I to space attack with that, so they spend a action to kind of like keep Toro there just in case he drops a bean, and he does, he drops a bean, and I make sure that I'm going to take it out before he even gets going by using Surprise Strike and taking him out. So that allows me to attack with a unit and do extra free uh, with extra free power, so they will take. So what's beans at five health? I can swing for six and take out with Toro. And using up his resources to has a drop a K2 or so, which is a very annoying card to have on board. But it's down, and 
nothing else to do so i decided i've only got one resource i don't think i've got anything to use that resource or anything worthwhile to do i'd rather take initiative so just take the initiative there so now i'm at five resources so i'm at a point where i can deploy um boba and he is used up as leader and i kind of want to I kind of want to take, I need to take both these units out where I can hold them off because he's already done 10 damage to my base. So I'm a third of my health down and I need to take some out but make as much use as possible. So here I'm thinking I can swing with Toro and then deploy Boba so that way Toro can then put damage on Tor um, Boba to then restand himself and get as much use out of him. But I also do want to hold off the units there. But I'm just thinking what, like, what's the best? And I think I might go ahead and just swing with car the cartel spacer, get a um, swing him, and be able to, or even swing with Toro actually, because then I can restand him. So swing with Toro, swing to his base, put some damage on, and see what he's going to do for his action. And that's exactly what I do. Swing just puts some damage on his base, an extra three, so he's now taking seven damage to his base, because I want to keep these cartel spacer just because he plays a space unit. So I like he can t potentially take out Toro here. And if he doesn't, I can kind of make make a bit more use of Toro by playing out a bounty hunter and getting put a damage on it so it can restand Toro. So here we have Alan is kind of weighing out his options, what he wants to kind of do, because he's got a few cards in hand, very few, quite a few options. There's a lot more actions in this turn, given how many resources I have, what he has aboard. So here he's going to decide to play out his wing leader. This means he can boost up a any rebels, either it's two rebels, by giving them two experience, so putting choosing for um yeah choosing Kato so to have that action done so now Kato is as a 4-4 has overwhelm and it's going to be a pain in the ass to remove as well so here i'm going to go ahead and cunning so the options i can do is many so here i'm going to choose to restand what well, rest both his uh, spit ground units so now he can't attack with them so i've saved myself a bit of damage there and give toro an extra four power for this turn because remember if i play a bounty hunter then i can go ahead and Put a, bounty, put a damage on the bounty hunter play and then go ahead and restand Toro. So here I'm going to make sure I can trigger Boba first to get a resource back because every little helps. So I'm going to take out a space unit with um, the Cardinal Spacer so I could untap one. I think I forgot to do it just then. I forgot to do the untap one so I could have had four resources untapped. But then because I played Boba, I just well, I'm kind of misread a bit. I forgot the um, misread Toro, I kind of forgot a little bit, I put the damage on Toro instead of Boba, so Boba once again should have one damage, that's a misplay from me, neither of us caught it, no, I completely forgot about it, but I realised after, um, no, while well, watching these videos anyway, and decided to just restand Toro by putting the damage on itself instead of Boba, it should be on Boba, and then using Toro to then straight up swing and take out Kato, so, because he's strong enough to do it, now it has 6 power, and here I go ahead and swing straight into the Battlefield Marine to go ahead and take out, control the board, and then restand two resources. But now I take, and so damage on Boba should be four, but yeah, it's, it's free at the moment because uh, once again, misread the Toro. And then put a Boba armor to kind of protect Boba a little bit and make him last a little bit longer. But the annoying thing with um, having Boba's armor is a really good card, but um, Alan has teched himself with. Handy Mandalorian cards like Sigma Fang Fighter to help deal with it because you can just knock it off, which is a bit of a pain. And once again, I do not resource but, uh, to six because I haven't got anything I can play for six. And with Boba's effect and with the cards I have in hand, I want to keep my options open and not like have very few, like loads of energy, but nothing to really do with them. So I decided to not bother resourcing because I just don't feel I need to at the moment. So he plays out as the Stay Being Fang Fighter. Knocks off the Boba's arm, which is pink. So now Boba only swings for four, but and it also is a little bit um, more vulnerable here as well. So I decided to just swing the cartel spacer into his uh, unit, so that way I can play something and trigger Boba because I wasn't able to before. So now if I play something, I can unswing and tap two resources, and plus clear something off the board as well because that uh, saving flank fighter is a free power two unit, so it's going to hit a little bit harder. And I've already taken currently thirteen damage, so I'm getting almost halfway to being out of the game. So here he goes ahead and puts out uh, Night Owl Skirmisher, puts a unit, gets a unit back on the board. I decide to pay five and drop boss because take it out, take four damage back so boss survives. And once again, I just control his board. So he just tapped out now, he's paid free for one unit, free forever. And here I can play out Boba, or well, swing with Boba, doing a bit more, four more damage. He's now on 11 damage and then tap two resources. Can't do anything with him. But 
it was good to have the option. So now we're going to the next turn. Once again, I'm not resourcing because once again, nothing that costs up to six. I think with the cards in hand, I've got enough resources, even with Boba, to kind of play what I want to play. And rather to keep all my like keep more options in my hand, more cards to use rather than the resource to have, once again, a lot of resources, but not much to actually play with them. So here he goes to help him uh, plays out a Kato so. And here we go, I have the uh this is where it comes in handy with my um Relentless Pursuit managed to run into that, so easy, a better way than Waylay to deal with Kato so. Because all Waylay would do is bounce Kato so back to his hand and then essentially allow him to play out again next turn. Like it would bounce, like hold him off a turn because they just wasted a turn doing that. But at least this way I get rid of Kato or so um, without him being able to just play it back. And also it won't trigger Kato or so. And as well, it gives a shield to Boba so Boba is a bit more protected. So since I removed the card from board, I'm going to be able to I swing with Boba and re untap tap two resources. So then I've still got four in views, and I swing also with Bosk and also with and then I'll play out a lot for long as well. So now I've got three units in the ground arena, and that's a lot of, dam lot of damage uh, on board. And he's also taken by looks with 18 damage, so he's 12 off his base. And Boba's got a shield, and we've got Bosk and four long as well to put some damage because both of those have four power. And Bosk is one health away from death, but yeah, um, I don't think it's much he can really take out. It's not much ambush in the um, in Sabine with red, yellow. I don't think what that red, green, but there's not much I think he can do. So like, even if he takes out Bosk, Bulba's still protected with a shield, and is basically hard to deal with. Because even if he drops a wrecker, he can do damage to it, but then he's not going to take it out, and I can still attack with Boba and get a lot of use out of him. So here he's thinking about what he wants to play because he's got his uh, red free out on board. So he did manage to keep a unit on board. Red free is out, but he's got nothing else to benefit from red free being out, gaining that raid extra raid one. So he's got to play out a green squadron because in the space arena, I'm kind of his, his units are kind of safe because I haven't played one, and I don't have a I don't have six resources to play out fire spray. So here I'm going to waylay to bounce back his red free so he can't attack with it this turn, and it triggered bosses but two damage on the green squadron. And trigger the I have a trigger for Boba, so when Boba attacks, I can untap two resources. So I put some chip damage. So Green Squadron now has one damage away, and if I play a Never Event, Boss is gonna finish it off. And now he can't attack. He, like, he's got nothing to attack with, so I'm not worried about taking much damage. And he's got a replay the Red Free. Once we get the benefit of it, so he's not really benefiting for anything. So he decides to go ahead and play a Red Free because once again, the Space Arena is away from all these units that can attack into him and take him out. And decided to swing with Boba first to get the resources back, put a nice bit of forward damage on his base. So that will put him down to 22, I think, 22 damage, by the looks of it. So I think it's 22 or 23. I'm not sure. But it looks like we got 23 damage, 7 away from him. And decided to go, yeah, use Cunning, because I got 4 resources open, to boost one of my units to kind of have enough for a swing of the game, and finish off his red green squadron and end the game there. So that is it. Quite a quite a fast paced game, quite a beneficial benefit on my side. Managing to deal with Sabine quite early in um well quite early and quickly in this game two. And in game one, uh not putting the Dark Saber on Sabine. Cause it seemed to be like uh not a great choice, but here's what it is. But that is it for this game. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, check out the next one tomorrow for our get for my round two. And also if you want to see that tech profile in more depth, check out my Monday's video. So that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now.